We did say that we'll be having a conversation with Dr. Fred Membe, who is the Socialist Party president. Dr. Membe is joining us via phone. Dr. Membe, good morning and welcome to the Red Hot Breakfast. Good morning. Dr. Membe, uh, the police in Serenja District on Sunday arrested you for the offense of uh, unlawful discharge of a firearm, and they charged you with the offense of assault, occasioning actual bodily harm together with uh, two of your members. But before we delve further into, uh, you know, uh, what really transpired in Serenje, how is how is the condition of your of your members who were injured in the attack? Uh, they are still in pain, but they are recovering. How how many? They are recovering. How many of them were injured? Uh, uh, I know of two because people scampered. They haven't had the opportunity to meet everybody who was there. And also there are other villagers, you know, who were attending the meeting. So I really don't know how many were injured, but I know of two. I know of uh, Comrade Preston Chinyama and also of uh, Sairi Chita. How, how bad were these the injuries? Were, were, the, the injuries were bad. I think you saw them you know, on the pictures that were posted on the internet. Okay. Um, Dr. Membe, from, from Sunday when the police... Um, issued a statement of your arrest there have been different versions of the story what really happened in Serenje on Sunday what happened in Serenje on Easter Saturday was very sad uh, my day started with a church service at the Catholic Church in Miririma after the church service around 12.30 or so we went to a camp house in Miririma we had lunch and prepared for a meeting at 14 hours that was supposed to take place at uh, Kamalamba Mother's Shelter, uh, which was the designated area for the Socialist Party on that day, as per the EEC, uh, ECZ campaign calendar or timetable. Uh, we got to Kamalamba Mother's Shelter around 14.30, between 14.30 and 15 hours. Immediately, we were just about to start the, to, to, de, to de disembark from the vehicles some 30, meters, some 30 meters away from the main road, the Great North Road. Two vehicles carrying UPND cutters stopped and got out of two vehicles, started running towards the where we are supposed to hold the meeting with sticks, stones, catapults. We started throwing stones, and they came and started beating people. People were scampering. And uh, the leaders and others started shouting for people not to run away. Uh, the women, most of the women had actually run away. They were beating. There was a big fight, which was frightening. I tried what... Uh, I couldn't see any way I could stop it. And it was becoming very, very fierce. I was still in the car and my bodyguard was standing by the door. Uh, I asked him to let me come out and fire a shot so that people can scamper and stop killing each other. Because we were going to have death both on the Socialist Party and the UPND side. It was a fierce fight. Mm. I've not seen anything like that in the few years I've been uh, at the home of the Socialist Party. Uh, he allowed me and uh, I fired a shot. They scampered a little bit, but after a few moments they came back. The fight continued. I was forced to fire another shot. And they scampered again. When they scampered, it gave us an opportunity to exit. So the, the bodyguard told me to get inside. We got inside and they started off with a side road uh, along the East Great North Road to a school called the... Uh, Kamalamba. Hello, Dr. Member. We'll try and get Dr. Member back on the line. We seem to be having challenges with uh, uh, the connection there. Uh, we'll try and get Dr. Member. He's just, uh, you know, narrating to us as to what transpired in Serenje uh, on uh, Easter Saturday. Uh, where we heard uh, where he was later uh, you know charged uh, by police for uh, assault uh, i think we have dr membe back on the line dr membe hello 
Hello. Hello. Uh, Dr. Mabel, please continue. We're having uh, a problem with the connection there. You are telling us of how yes. you, you left the scene and were going to a primary school. Yes, we, 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 we moved on the side road parallel with the Great North Road mm. and got to a, a, a nearby school about a kilometer or so away from where we were at the mother's the shelter. And uh, we stopped. We did we stopped. We saw a land cruiser carrying a, a riot police coming in our direction. Uh, we were relieved. We thought now we had protection. And uh, when the police got to where we were, they asked us why we were running away. And uh, the bodyguard told them, no, we're not running away. We were actually, we saw when we saw you, we stopped here so that we can have the protection. We are under attack. Before they could finish uh, explaining with it to the police, the UPND cut has arrived. And they started the fighting with us, uh, uh, attacking us. That's in full view of the police. In full view of the police. Uh, they grabbed me, trying to pull me out of the car. The car. And uh, they were kicking, punching me. They were punching the, my bodyguard and the, and the other two people who were around. Uh, it was difficult for the police. They were helpless. They didn't know what to do, and there were many. Uh, after some time, the police just fired a, 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 a tear gas canister to disperse them. When that happened, my bodyguard ordered the driver to drive away and go to the Ndavala checkpoint police post. So we drove, that, we drove there. When we got there, we found the, the police they said, oh, this is the vehicle we are waiting for. We said, we are coming to you actually to, 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 to seek protection and also to report that they attacked on us. Uh, the police told us to park. We told them, if we park outside here, we'll be attacked. Can you take us where we are safe? And then we deal from there. The police said, no, you are safe here. We told them, we don't feel safe. If your colleagues who are not there than politics and they are more than you have failed to stop them from attacking us, what about you who are few and the first traffic police? You will not be able to protect us. They insisted, no, you are safe in our hands. Just leave the car and get into the police force. We told them, okay, in that case, they allow us to park the vehicle behind the police post because they will come and destroy it. Uh, the police allowed us, eventually the car was parked behind the police post and we got inside the police post. In no time, the UPND cadres followed us, got into the police post, they overpowered the police who were there, started attacking us, kicking us, punching us. Uh, the police had no control. Lucky enough, shortly after that, the, the riot police arrived also at the, at the scene. And they kept the situation slightly under control, but the confusion still continued, the attacks still continued. We were still being kicked around, the police themselves were being insulted, the cadres took over the police post completely. We were not given a chance to report. When the UPMD cadres came, they were given the chance to report their fight. And the certain statements were taken from them. There was one of them who was injured, badly injured, and they had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, the police had a very difficult time protecting us in the police force. Eventually, they decided that you know, instead of keeping us there for long, where they will not be able to control the situation, they should take us to the Ranger Central Police Station, uh, the main police station in Terenja. Mm. Uh, we told them, well, how are we going to get out of here? We have surrounded the building, they are at the door. How are you going to get us out of here? They tried, they tried. Eventually, we agreed to go. And I asked them, what about the car? Where do we leave the car if it's here? They said, no, leave it in our hands. And already the kids were with them. So the car was left. When we were being taken into the police van, we were being punched, kicked, until we stayed off with the, the, the police van. They followed the convoy, in a convoy, the European Bukada uh, Vani. One of the vehicles overtook us. And when we got at the place where the fight had, had, had started, we found two of our colleagues tied with a, with a hand tied behind their backs with fiber. They were very badly beaten. This was the Comrade Chinyama and the Comrade Chita. We asked the police to stop. 
and pick them up. The police stopped to pick them up. One of the police officers, the constable Simwanza, took a knife and cut off the, the fibers from the two comrades. Then we drove to the police post, to the main police station in Serenje. When we got there, we found the whole police station surrounded by UPND cadres. They had to try, they had to go to the back to enter the CID office. We also found the place there was also surrounded. Getting out of the car was impossible. It was near impossible. We were being punched while there. In full view of the police, the police were being abused. Eventually, they managed to get us into the office. But even when we are getting out of the car to get into the office, we are still being punched until we got inside. When we got inside, I told them, before you take any, uh, you do anything, can these two comrades who are badly injured, Chinyama and the comrade Chita, be taken to the hospital? They kept on telling us, we will take them, we will take them. They were not taken to the hospital until 4 a.m. on Sunday. That was Saturday, 4 a.m. on Sunday, when they were taken to the hospital. They have taken our complaint up to that, and they wanted us to start answering to UPND cadres the allegations against us. We told them this is not fair. We were the first ones to come to the police to, to report at the police post in Ndavala. The police post in the officers in, uh, at the police post in Davala attended to UPND who came later. We are not being hit. We are not being allowed to, to make our complaint. They said, no, we'll give you a chance. We'll give you a chance. Uh, then they said there are these allegations against you, uh, the three of us, and uh, we were asked to answer to those allegations. We were there until about 11, 12 answering to those allegations, which were totally unfounded. Uh, this is basically what transpired on that day. Okay. It was very sad that the police were not able to do anything. The UPN others were clearly untouchable. The police were being insulted. We were being insulted. My mother, my wife, myself, I was being insulted. We were being assaulted in front of the police. No arrest. Dr. Member, whatsoever. Dr. Member, according mm -hmm. to the police, uh, the police statement, uh, a total of nine UPND supporters were assaulted by yourself and two, uh, you know, two of your members. How true is this? And uh, did the situation warrant you, as president of, of a political party, to discharge a firearm? If, if I didn't discharge that firearm, people would have been killed. People would have been killed on both sides. And probably even myself, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. There was extreme danger. And the shots were fired in the air and not aimed at anybody. Two shots in the air and not aimed at anybody. I've carried a firearm for most of my life. From 1978 to this very day, I've been associated with firearms. I've never killed anybody. I've never injured anybody. I'm not new to firearms. And the police records can, can show that I've carried the firearm. It's a licensed firearm. It's not an illegal firearm. It's licensed by the police. And the license was with me. And it's still with the police. It's valid. Mm. So it's not like I was carrying an illegal firearm, no. It's a, a firearm authorized by the police. I have a license for it from the police. Again, I'll ask, uh, according to the police statement, um, a total of nine uh, UPND supporters were assorted and uh, were assorted by yourself and two members of, of your party. Uh, how, how true is it? It's not, it's not possible. How can you... <laughs> Three people or one person, me, a 49 people. Eh? Am I a Samson? Eh? I'm not in Mike Tyson. Hmm? I do not have to do that. And uh, the firearm in my hands. How do I assault somebody? On one side, you are carrying a firearm and you are hurting people. You are not even shooting at them. Uh, the whole thing is it's, 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 it's a fabrication. I was not near anybody, I touched nobody. I assaulted nobody.
So it's just a fabrication trying to tarnish my name, but it won't work. Mm. Doctor it Mimbe. won't work. Doctor Mimbe, I was with my bodyguard. Mm. So, uh, throughout my bodyguard was next to me. Um, Doctor Mimbe, while you claim to have been attacked, uh, we have we haven't heard of. Uh, any UPND member being arrested in Serenja, particularly in the ward where this fracas happened, while the opposite is is true about you and two of your uh, of your members, did you report the attackers to the police? And uh, what did they do about it? Because in this whole fracas, um, that we haven't heard the police, you know, uh, make any arrests on the UPND side. Yes, it's true. We were being assaulted in front of the police. But when a person commits a crime in front of the police, the police doesn't even need any report. They arrest that person. That did not happen. When we are being threatened with the inside the police post, nobody was arrested. These are known people. And known to the police and also are known to us, at least some of them, identifiable. No arrest was made. We tried to put up a complaint, that is the first police post where we went. They did not take our complaint. They attended to the UPND. We were still even insulting the police and abusing the police in a manner I've never seen. I think that ended with the, U the PF exiting power, but it has continued the police was being abused. They couldn't say anything. You could see they were annoyed, but they could not do anything. They were even being threatened with the hospitals, where their friends have been feared from the police. Did you officially report? Or the way they have announced about they have not a complaint. Dr. Membe. I can identify into individuals that have not been arrested up to now. And who committed the assault against us in front of the police? Dr. Membe. I can name a police, police officers who were there when he was being assaulted. Hello, hello, Dr. Membe. I, I think we're having, we're, oh, yes. we're having a challenge hearing you. Um, I was going to, uh, you know, just cut the line and then call you back so that we, we oh, were okay, able to you. hear you. Let's, let's just cut and try and reconnect because uh, the, the, the line is, uh, uh, is breaking. We have Socialist Party President Dr. Fred Membe um, speaking to us regarding the incident that happened in Serenje and just talking about, uh, you know, what really transpired and what led to him discharging a firearm uh, during, uh, you know, um, the, the, the meeting Hello? that the Socialist Party was having. Dr. Member, it's good to have you back on. Um, as you were explaining, uh, have you made any official report to the police regarding uh, the UPND's attack on you? Yes, we have. We launched a complaint. We filed a complaint with the police. We are waiting to hear from them if there will be any arrest. And on top of that, at night, they went and attacked our main campaign camp in Olirima. Mm -hmm. These are people who are threatened who are at the police post in Indavala that will not be allowed to be in the ward and they are going to attack us. And indeed they attacked our main camp at night while, while our comrades were sleeping there. They looted the materials, the campaign materials that were there. They looted foodstuffs. They injured people. Complaints have been made to the police. But no arrests up to now. So it's not only one occasion. Okay. Uh, Dr. Membe, uh, as we're bringing this to a close, um, you accused the police and the UPND of framing you to portray you as, uh, as a violent, po as a violent uh, political party. Uh, what do you think is their interest in doing that? Throughout this process, when we were at the, the, the main police station in Serenje, the DC was there. The DC even tried to pick up a quarrel with me. I just restrained myself and stayed away from him. It's clear, very, very clear that the police had been giving instructions to, the, 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 the politicians from UPND have been giving instructions to the police, especially the DC had been there for Serenje. And also, we are talking to police officers. We know what was happening. If it was a fair, fair 
policing issue the issue that been uh, uh, handled different the issue hasn't been handled in a fair and just manner mm. uh, and it's not the fault of the police you can see the pressure on them and moreover let me say that you know these cadres who came to attack us some of them are not from Ser are not from serenje these are people who have been transported by the leadership of the upnd from other places for no other reasons but to cause violence they came where we were where they were not supposed to be there the ACZ timetable did not allow them to be there so they followed us to attack us we did not go where they were they followed us where they were not supposed to be to attack us Dr. Membe, we, we, all that is not being taken into account Dr. Membe, with that said uh, with all the, that transpired in Serenje and, and we do know that there were some journalists uh, that were also victims of political violence do you think this by-election mm -hmm. should proceed? well I leave that to the ECZ but I think ECZ needed to move in in terms of the policing of their elections there is need for better coordination between ECZ and the police and ECZ I think in my view should provide resources to the police to be able to cope with the riots or with the violence and I think ECZ also should follow up these issues with the police the policing of these by-elections are not free and fair are not balanced there is protection of the crimes of the ruling party no one should be protected when they commit a crime everybody should be treated the same way there should be no impunity with the criminal behavior i don't mind where that criminal behavior is coming from whether it's coming from the socialist party or the upnd or the pf or any other party those who commit crimes should be arrested and be prosecuted and if you convicted send it to prison okay. criminal behavior should not be tolerated in the in our politics violence cannot be a tool for a legitimate cause it's an it's an socialist and it's an christian mm. the bodies we carry are images of god that's what christians believe and if they are images of god they must be treated with respect they should not be harmed we don't teach our cadres violence we teach our cadres peace and even our motto is justice equity and peace we teach uh, we have a, a party school we have party schools actually we teach our cadres the need for peace you cannot free people from poverty if there's violence in the society all right dr Membe, we would like to thank you very much for speaking to us this morning thank you very much